Hey everybody, it's Tatter here at IRI checking out Division Champions 818 Steel Armadillos coming out of Michigan. Also, NFC finalists won their division there as well to a phenomenal season for Steel Armadillos. You gotta take a look at this entire packaging that they bring. We're talking about some of the cool iterations they've been doing with their robot, things they've added, and also a couple of cool surprises that goes through some of their packaging and their programming. Let's talk more about them coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. At Kettering University, over 30% of the student population was in high school robotics. These same students have received a portion of over $7 million in first scholarship. Scholarship applications will open in September. Get ready to go pro and get more information at kettering.edu slash first. Luke, let's start off talking about an iteration of your robot, your ground intake that you've added on there. Talk to me about uh, why did you add it, how's it been working out for you, and any advice for other teams too would be great. So in between our state's appearance and our world appearance, we added the ground intake to become more competitive and the higher levels. So on this side, we run a Neo 550 that is run on this chain that turns the wheels themselves. And then on this side, we have a bag motor with an encoder. So this brings it up and down so we're able to bring it on the ground. When you run it, what will happen is the intake comes down, this comes through, it will pick it up, and then it automatically comes up without any button over here. And then we spit it back out once we get to the target. So you added this for championships, is that correct? Yes, so we built it at states to become more competitive, and then we did not have enough time to program it at states, so we put it on during the time between states and worlds, and we had it on at Worlds. So, so at World Championship, obviously division winners with that as well too. Were you utilizing that most matches for yourself? Yeah. When we went into the actual playoffs, most of our goals were to uh, hit the low cubes and fill up right in front of us. So we were able to move very quickly on the low cubes and get our highest cycle time. Tofik, let's talk about the uh, arm on your robot a bit more. I'd love to hear about the extension and kind of how it rotates and uh, everything that's gone into it. I love it. So our main goal, this is our main piece of... Uh, of our uh, robot here. So on our arm, we run a two stage. Our first stage is run by chain. Our second stage is run by uh, uh, rope. So for us, we had to manage how we have, for us, we had to manage how we have our wire up to here. So we added an indicator where we bring a spring down while extending, it would go up to reach up our claw. Um, we also in implemented, uh, we have a 720 to one gear ratio with a, uh, a sprocket that controls our ratios to go in and out. And also, we added a bike brake, which is many people are very surprised in how we implemented a bike brake to our robot because uh, with the 720 gear ratio, with 720 gear ratio, it was hard to put a lot of stress and tension on the talons. And um, so the bike brake relieves a lot of it. And we're talking, I think, a bit more about some of the programming of that a little bit as well. Can we see uh, some of the arm kind of move around, maybe show me a little bit how that functionality works and walk me through it? So for our arm, there's three different stages that we have depending on what we need it to do. So this is our neutral position here. But if we want to, let's say, pick up from the shelf, which is our main uh, pickup area, or score mid or high cu uh, mid uh, cones or high cubes, we can go to our mid stage, which is right here. So basically how this works is we have limit switches and encoders all throughout the arm. So we know where it's at at all times. And this helps us just keep track of our position and know where we want to get so it's the same position every single time. This also works with the bike brake because it basically lets us get to this position and then lock in place as you see the arm isn't moving at all and it's not oscillating like if we were just running on PIDs. So then it lets us get there quick and hold. So if we go back to our neutral position now, it's really quick. We don't have to worry about it being slow or taking time to get to somewhere. So there's many different positions we have. As you saw there was our mid position for cones and cubes from the shelf. If you look here, if we want to score cones high, we can go to our high position, which is just as quick and it holds, especially all the way out there, it holds it pretty well. So these positions with all of our encoders and our bike brake makes this system work almost flawlessly. We've had very little issues with it all season. So if we go back to neutral here, it quickly can just get to its position and hold it. And then the last position we, position we use often is our score low position, as you can see here. This allows us to basically, if we have a cone, drop it on the ground because our manual jog up and down, as you can see here, our in and out is very slow. 
So we don't want to be doing that to try and get to position and find where we need to drop it so it stays in the, the bottom scoring location. So having these set points just allows us to get there really quickly and be reliable. So that was one great thing that we figured out with our set points in our arm this season. Jack, you know, watching your robot uh, come out, it seems like you're just so stable all the way through. Are you doing anything softer wise? Uh, to try to keep your CG uh, at, like, you know, nice and stable or is that just all from the design process? Um, that was mostly the design process. I don't know if you want to talk about that, Tofik. You helped work on all of that. There was no real software in the, the center of gravity and keeping it low. So we knew that because we found out that we have a balance beam or a balance on the field, so we had to figure out how to keep a low CG. So we added, um, so the whole bottom plate of this is a whole aluminum plate, covers the whole bottom, which increases more CG to the bottom. All our heavy stuff are closer to the middle. Yeah, so there's a lot of ballast on the bottom there, essentially, right, as it goes through. Mm -hmm. uh, as we start to wrap up on this robot camera, talk to me about the uh, claw here. Uh, really curious to hear about uh, the uh, Neos that you're running on here, too, and how that's working out. Yeah, so with, our, uh, with the claw design, having to pick up cones and cubes using the same manipulator, we had to uh, make sure that we could pick both of them up effectively. And so we have two different modes here. So right now it's in cu uh, cone mode, and it'll if you put a cone in, it'll hold it there nice, and then we can drop it, and then we can leave it in cone mode, in cube mode, sorry, and intake that. And so as you might have noticed, the wheels when we're intaking spin at different speeds. That is due to uh, when we intake a cone, the cone is uh, less malleable than a cube is, and so we needed to we needed it to be quicker so that we had a uh, stable grasp. Plus, when we tried to intake uh, cubes, it would pop out because we were grabbing it so much. Uh, but also, we were running uh, Neo 550s, and instead of using the output shaft, uh, we uh, bolted on a 3D resin print to connect it to the belt and then to the wheel. Well, 818 Seal Armadillos, congratulations on a fantastic season uh, that you had here. Of course, good luck here at IRI, but we look forward to seeing what you bring in future seasons as well. Thanks a lot for taking time to tell us more about your robot, and good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. At Kettering University, over 30% of the student population was in high school robotics. These same students have received a portion of over $7 million in first scholarship. Scholarship applications will open in September. Get ready to go pro and get more information at kettering.edu slash first. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.